This article was shared on my socials by a friend of mine. The article was from the Sojourners website written by Stephen Madsen. The article was used to justify the protests that took place after the death of George Floyd by policeman Derek Chauvin. Upon reading the article, I thought it would give me an analysis as to why Christians should protest as Jesus was a protester. Instead of having clarity, I was left confused. I understand when people protest, it's a way of rejecting or a way of showing disapproval of an action taken by a government or organizations. Disapproval can also be shown towards the action or existence of institutions that people regard as immoral. When people protest, they protest because there is something that is unjust that has taken place and by demonstrating on the city street, they are letting the government know that they are not happy with how things are handled. This can lead to reform that changes the way things are done or how people are treated by either government or organizations. In this video series, I have selected 11 examples that the author has given and I've done my best to explain my interpretation of the scripture given with a little help from other people and why I think that the scriptures used by the author were not good examples to justify protesting. I am not here to sow discourse within the Christian community. This is my own personal view on protesting and the scriptures we use to justify what we do. We need to be careful of how we use scripture to justify our actions. This is how I interpret the scriptures against how they were used in this article. Example 2. When Jesus stormed into the temple courts, interrupted the proceedings by overturning tables, yelling, and driving both people and animals out of the room using a whip, he was condemning the greed and corruption of religious hypocrites because Jesus was a protester. John 2 from verse 13 to 25 describes the moment when Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival and he went into the temple. He found people selling animals within its walls and money changers doing business. He then made a whip and drove them out and overturned tables. He turned to those selling doves and he instructed them not to sell them and warned them not to make his father's house into a house of merchandise. Then after, Jesus' disciples were reminded of a scripture from the book of Psalms. The people then asked for a sign to explain what he was doing. Jesus answered them by saying that if they destroyed the temple, he will be able to raise it up in three days. The people were then confused about Jesus' statement, but Jesus was talking about his own body. Jesus' statement later became a reminder to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. It was at that moment they understood what he meant. The author claims that the reason why this makes Jesus a protester is because he was condemning the greed and corruption of religious hypocrites. Did this make Jesus a protester? On the surface level, it may appear that way, but this was not the main reason behind what he did. It goes much deeper than that. Jesus went into the temple to drive out those that were doing business within its walls. It was turned into a marketplace where people were buying their sacrifices and money changing. To understand why this is a problem, we have to look at the location of the marketplace, why business took place within the temple encouraging the presence of those selling animals and the money changers, and how this affected other people within the temple. The Location of the Marketplace According to the Dictionary of New Testament Background, the area where Jesus caused the commotion was in the outer courts of the temple, known as the Court of the Gentiles. This was an area where Gentiles, people who were not Jewish, were allowed to come and worship God, but they were not allowed to go any further within the temple. The area was suitable for trade because it was a spacious area and it contained porticos. The location of the marketplace within the court of the Gentiles made it convenient for people to buy their sacrificial animals there risk-free on their way to the inner court. When traveling, especially long distances with animals, there was a possibility the animal would be damaged. Animals for sacrifice had to be presented without blemish or defect. That is found in Leviticus 22. Locating the market within the outer courts was a great logical idea but it was to the detriment of the Gentiles. More on this later. The Presence of the Money Changers 
Passover was and still is a very important period in the Jewish calendar. During Jesus' time, hundreds and thousands of people, both Jewish and Gentile, will come and worship on their pilgrimage, people from different countries and nationalities. When you arrived at the temple to worship, you would either bring your own animal or buy one for sacrifice. You are also required to pay an annual temple tax. Only a certain type of coin was required to purchase sacrificial animals and to pay the tax. This coin was known as the Tyrian Shekel. The temple tax was a tribute that was paid to help maintain the temple. This was originally what was instructed by God to pay in Exodus 30 from verse 13 to 16. Half a shekel was required. The tribute could not be paid with what was equivalent to half a shekel in other coinage available at the time, such as the denarius or the mite, for example. The high priest instead required the tribute to be paid using the silver Tyrian shekel only. The Tyrian shekel was a coin from the Phoenician city of Tyre. The coin itself was not the problem. It was the type of coin used. The Tyrian shekel contained two images, Heracles, aka Melkart, a Phoenician pagan god, on one side and an eagle on the other. Having these images broke two commandments in Exodus 20 from verse 3 and 4. At the time the tribute was established, payment was made through the collection of silver metal that weighed a measurement called half a shekel. Later, when the usage of the coins became popular, they had images of either plants or contained a dedication to God in order not to break that commandment. Instead of the coins being a dedication to the works of God, it appears that shekel became a tribute to false gods. But why would the Jewish leadership allow the coin to be used with a clear conscience? David Hendon, in his Guide to Biblical Coins, observes, open quote, The reason for this, as the Mishnah makes clear, that valid money is not subject to being unclean, and is only susceptible to uncleanliness when it is used for another purpose such as jewelry or weight. Since a viable coin cannot be defiled, the only relevance is its value and purity, not its design. Close quote. For this reason, the shekel was permitted by the temple authority. It was because of the purity of the coin and not its appearance, but that did not change the fact that it had an image of a false god. So imagine you arrive at the temple only to realize that in order to purchase anything or worship God through your sacrifice, you needed this coin. All you have is the coinage you traveled with. This is where the money changes came in. They were there as foreign exchange experts to give you the currency required in the temple for whatever currency you had. Having money changes nearby made sense, but yet not right. A house of merchandise and a den of thieves. The money changes and those that sold sacrifices brought money to the city. Passover was big business. Josephus, a first century historian, observes that there was an estimate of 255,000 lambs required during the time of Passover. Jesus was familiar with the market and the marketplace and may have been aware of their practices. There was something about the behavior of the business people and the temple authority within the temple that Jesus did not like. Rather than having the temple being filled with people preparing for worship, the temple became more of a marketplace, a house of merchandise, where people probably negotiating and calling out sales or even conducting auctions. This created the wrong atmosphere in the temple. The presence of the money changers was essential for business, but corruption was rife as you could be overcharged for their services. There was a possibility that you could be charged extortionate prices of up to at least 8%. By making the coin exclusive, it gave them the ability to put a high charge to have this coin. There being no other coinage as competition within the temple, they could charge whatever they want for the exclusive coin. Here are other reasons the shekel was made exclusive. These are my own theories after studying what I could find regarding the Tyrian shekel and the money changes. 1. According to Exodus 30, everyone had to pay the same amount of tax, even if you were rich or poor. 
Adding this extra charge made it difficult for poor people to gain access to this coinage as you probably had saved just enough. Your focus had now shifted from a worship mindset to a money mindset. It was an extra burden to worry about. Paying the commission charge if you were rich was easier but the fee may have been higher. You're still getting robbed. But again, your focus was shifted. And two... The exclusivity gave them power over people. It gave them control over the materials and process of worship. You could not fully worship in the temple without these services. No one was to feel subjugated, especially when it came to worshipping God. There was a possibility that the sacrifice that you brought from home would be rejected and you have to buy one in the marketplace. This was a money-making scheme, especially when the priests were in charge of inspecting the sacrifices. William Henrik, in his article on the Mysteries of the Messiah website, highlights an example of this. He identifies a high priest called Anas, who would do such a practice. Open quote. In the event of he, Anas, rejected an animal, he was quick to have an approved animal available for purchase at a premium price. Since many local people were involved with agriculture, they frequently raised their own animals for sacrifice. But all animals had to be approved by Anas, who was known for rejecting perfectly good animals for the sole purpose of reselling them to someone else at inflated prices. Furthermore, many people traveled great distances to the temple and Anas took advantage of their plight by overcharging them 10 to 20 times the fair market value. Close quote. This made the money changes and the high priests very wealthy. This is why Luke recalls Jesus saying that they had turned the temple into a den of thieves in Luke 19 verse 46. Not only were the chief priests working with the money changers, they were probably working with the Roman colonial government that oversaw Jerusalem at that time. Dr. William Domeris, in his article, The Enigma of Jesus' Temple Intervention, Four Essential Keys, quotes Marcus Borg by pointing out that the Den of Thieves reference may have been aimed not to the activity of the money changers and sellers of sacrificial animals, but rather it was to the temple authority that collaborated with robbers at the top of the imperial domination system. He then adds, both temple authorities and the imperial government collaborated to ensure that the temple tax was paid in the different quality silver available, regardless of the imagery on the coins. Such an action was clearly in the interests of the ruling authorities and carried obvious negative implications for the Jewish peasantry of Galilee and Judea. The Worship of the Gentiles as I mentioned before, the court of the Gentiles was the area where the Gentiles were allowed to gather and worship God. The business of the money changers and of the people that were selling sacrificial animals was more important than the worship of Gentiles. James McGrath, a professor in New Testament language and literature, points out that, open quote, animals leave behind messy droppings and the dung was considered to defile sacred space. But some may have thought that the presence of Gentiles, viewed as inherently unclean, was no more or no less defiling than the presence of animal dung. Close quote. Seeing this would have made Jesus upset and he drove them out in verse 15 to make a way for the Gentiles to be able to worship God. Since the Mosaic laws were established in the early Old Testament, God had always welcomed Gentiles to worship with his people, especially at Passover. This can be found in Exodus 12, Numbers 9, and Numbers 15. This has always been God's desire. Isaiah 56 from verse 6 to 8 says, Also the son of the foreigner, who joins himself to the Lord to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord to be his servant. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. Now just to recap, 
The marketplace was located within the court of the Gentiles. The location of the temple in this area made it difficult for anyone, including Gentiles, to come and worship. The Tyrian shekel was the only coinage available for trade and paying the tax within the temple. The money changers were there to change any foreign coinage to the Tyrian shekel. This was probably in collaboration with the colonial government. The high priests would often cheat people into paying more for sacrificial animals. These activities of the high priests, money changers and animal sellers made it difficult for people to come and worship. Now that brings an end to the first part. I have tried my best to give some background to John's account of Jesus in the temple. Hopefully we can understand Jesus' actions better. In the next part, we will find out if what Jesus did can be concluded as a protest or him being a protester.